Hey, everybody. Randy Patterson here with Boomerosity. If you followed Boomerosity for very long at all, you know we're a big fan of the great band Exile. They've been around for 61 years now. Can you believe that? And, of course, their huge, huge signature hit is Kiss You All Over. Great song. Have a lot of fun with it. Um, but these guys are still great. They're great singers. They're great musicians. They're great performers. They still deliver top shelf entertainment on stage as well as on record. And um, they're great guys besides. They're great to talk to. I've interviewed several of the guys. And now for the second time, I've interviewed Sonny Lemaire, who is also the voice on the band's new single, After You, from their album, A Million Miles Later. And the album is great. It came out last fall. And it has a bunch of great songs on there. Every one of them are worth the price of the album alone. So I would encourage you to get it, listen to it, buy it. Buy it. That's how the bands get supported. And we need to support our favorite bands. And if you get a chance, I'd go to their website and find out where they're going to be performing near you and go catch your shows. I've seen them perform. They still put on a phenomenal show. A lot of fun to watch, a lot of fun to listen to. And as you'll see in this interview, a lot of fun to talk to. If you don't mind, would you go and hit the like button as you're watching this? And also hit subscribe if you're not already a Boomerosity subscriber, wherever you're watching this from, on the website, on YouTube, on Star Worldwide Networks, or the podcast platform you might be listening to this on. This helps us out a lot, and it doesn't cost you a dime. Such a deal. So without any further ado, here's my latest interview with Sonny Lemaire of, of Exile. Until next time, this is Randy Patterson. Take care. Well, man, good to see you again. Uh, last time I Thank chatted you. with you was just before Christmas. How, how have things been? Been good. Everything's been good. You know, uh, shows are starting to happen. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually writing and recording again right. for, for the project that'll be out probably you know, 2025. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, you know, we're, we're keeping everything moving forward. Cool. And gosh, marking what, 60 years now? 61 this wow. year. So do you think this career is going to work out for you guys or do you have know. something else? <laughs> we're awfully hard headed. We just keep trying. <laughs> I hear you McDonald's know. is hiring. <laughs> hey, before AI takes <laughs> over, <laughs> you know, and that's the truth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, just out of curiosity, I didn't write this down, but yeah, are you guys seeing any impact of of AI on your end as far as how you guys do business, how you perform, how you record, anything like that? Not yet, not yet. I mean, not personally. Mm -hmm. Of course, I mean you're familiar, I guess, with the new Randy Travis thing. Yes, right. Yes. Well, of course, that's got everybody talking, and um, the Beatles thing before that, yeah. Well, yeah, but the Beatles, all they did was extract the vocal from that one channel, from the vocal and right. piano. That's all they did. You know, they didn't have somebody else sing John Lennon's part. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that's, I mean, because obviously with that kind of technology, you can resurrect anybody. Yeah. So well, how do you feel we'll about what, that? I, 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 I'm conflicted. Yeah, me too. You know, I mean, I love Randy Travis. And I mean, I've read all the stuff. I saw the sixty minutes or the um, the the thing about it, and um, I'm I'm just conflicted. I, I really am. Um, I mean, I would love to hear. Um, when you think about it, you know, so, somebody to be able to sing again, but it, it's just it's it's open up this. this uh, Pandora's box that obviously now we, you know, it's opened up. So all kinds of things are going to happen as a result. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting. We probably won't be around to feel the full impact, but the grand, probably. the grandchildren's generation between that stuff going on and all these yeah. catalogs being bought. Yeah. You know, yeah. what's, I mean, to me, I see that as a perfect storm of something. I don't even really fully I can't get my head around where that could lead. Yeah. But with that concentration of catalogs taking place. Yeah. I think it's kind of scary myself, but. 
I, I, I don't know that I'm smart enough to say that emphatically or not, but it, it, oh, I'm, I'm with you on that. I know. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but other than that, how have you been? You guys recording and doing some touring? How, how's oh, 2024 tweet, tw tweeting, treating you? <laughs> <laughs> tweeting you too, to, I guess. <laughs> uh, this year, 20, it's starting to shape up pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, dates are coming in all the time. Um, so we're excited about getting out there playing, you know, not just the hits, but some of the new things, including... You know, the new single that was just released. Yeah. Uh, a few things off the new, off. well, I say the new, the 2023 uh, project, which was a million miles later. Mm -hmm. um, you know, still very proud of that, obviously. I mean, it's still practically brand new. And uh, excited about where all that may lead. But, you know, a as we're moving forward with that, like I just told you earlier, we still are, rec you know, writing brand new things. And already have been in the studio recording a couple of brand new things. Good deal. So, it, again, it's just the process of, you know, don't rest on your laurels. Um, right. You got to just keep moving forward. How's the, um, what kind of traction is the new stuff getting with fans? What are you hearing from fans on that? Well, I, I mean, it shows it seems to be great, you know, and some of the online things that, that we get from fans. They seem to be to be reacting to it really, really well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, now the new single is something quite different, you know. It's because for one thing, I'm singing the new single, mm -hmm. and while I did sing a few things years ago, um, you know, our main lead singers, JP and Les. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, God knows, <laughs> you know, they're great. Uh, but this is this is my voice. Uh, the song is kind of a I don't know how you would describe it. It really reflects our our history, you know, our all the influences that we've you know absorbed, you know, from the time we started to now. And I think it's really cool. But we'll see how what happens. I'm glad to hear you say that because I'll tell you, I mean, I. I'm not a musician. I sang in choir in high school and that's about yeah. the extent of it. So I'm, I don't profess to be an expert on it, but I tell you how this latest single after you struck me, yeah. please. it felt, it sounded to me and I loved it. Very Beatlesque. Does that, well, that's, that's an accurate. Oh, cool. I, I mean, you know, we, we say in interviews or we have said in interviews, probably our biggest influ influence besides Motown and Stax and stuff like that was the Beatles. I mean, that's just a fact. And this song reflects that. Mm -hmm. So there it is. What does that song mean to you? Well, I, you know, it was just uh, a, a guy exclaiming his devotion, his love for his significant, his wife, whomever, that, you know, what... I, since you've come into my life after you, hey, you know, there's nobody else for me. It's mm -hmm. it's you. Uh, you know, uh, you're the end all be all of my, you know, of my love. And uh, it's a love song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I bet you see some interesting stuff out in the crowd when you're singing that one, huh? We've only, you know, again, the, the few shows we already had this year, we've only played it a couple of times. Now, the reaction was really good. But again, I think people are surprised because even though I do sing some leads in the show, you know, they're they're used to JP or Les right, doing right. the lead. Mm -hmm. And, you know, while, you know, in choosing this single, by the way, uh, our label and uh, they did a focus group, which they did on the previous single. And we were, as a band, ready to accept what the focus group decided. I mean, we all have our personal favorites, but, you know, I mean, let's hear what people that listen to radio all the time, what they think about certain songs. Mm -hmm. And this song was chosen. Mm -hmm. So while JP and Les have sang, you know, almost everything practically up to now, practically, I mean, I did, you know, a couple of things during the Arista lineup years. Um, we're trying to reach new people. Mm -hmm. I mean, my voice is different from the rest. This song is different from anything out there. It doesn't sound like anything else. 
uh, which which is good and scary. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, I mean, of course, I hope it does really well. Um, I can't predict that. All I know is that we accepted what the focus group chose. I was happy for it personally mm -hmm. and hoping to reach people that maybe don't know Exile, that just hear the song for the first time and go, who is that? Let's check that out. Well, when I was listening to it, you know, how yeah. we can get sometimes we get, a, you know, we hit play and then we start working on something and we, you know, we're, we're guys. So we're not very good at multitasking the women tell us, but <laughs> yeah, you know, I was doing that. I was like, wait a minute. I thought I hit the next aisle song. And I turned and I said, ah, I did. And I mean, and again, it's not a criticism, Sonny, but I mean, I love the different sound and I think it broadens, yeah. you know, I don't know that, it, I mean, yeah, it'd be great if it, it broadens to new people for your audience. Yeah. But I think it also broadens a greater appreciation from your existing fan base, the sound that you guys produce now. So it, yeah. it, 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 it gives it a solid base in my opinion. And, um, I think it was a good move on you guys and I, my hats off to you for that. Cause it's, it's a great song. It really is. Well, I, I really appreciate that, you know, and again, um, it, like you just said, obviously we don't want to alienate our base, of course, right. Hoping that they will accept this and appreciate it for what it is, but with the hope also of getting some new listeners. Mm -hmm. Some folks that maybe really have never been tuned in to Exile before. Mm -hmm. um, if if it does those things, you know, knock on wood, it's going to be great. What other songs would you personally point to, song or songs, as a calling yeah. card for the whole album? Well, certainly the title track, A Million Miles Later, Mm -hmm. Is one of my personal favorites because it it was written, you know, as we were writing for the project, uh, and we came up with that title. We wanted to write something to kind of um, thank our fans, you know, the the folks that have stuck with us through thick and thin all these years. You know, bought the records, bought the CDs, you know, came to the shows, called radio stations. And this is our um, kind of our love song to our fans. Mm -hmm. So, it's, I mean, that's a personal favorite of mine. You know, the other thing is one of the other things that I do happen to sing on the record. Also, l listen to me, record uh, on the project. We're showing our age, my yeah, friend. Yeah. The other thing <laughs> is that may be released next year. I don't know. We'll see. It's called Nothing But Sunshine Now. Mm -hmm. um, love that. Of course. Um, have you listened to the whole project yet? Yes, have I you have. Been able to? Yes, I have. I have two that I, I okay. really like as well. So. Uh, and, and, you know, of course, the kind of out, out of left field, the gospel thing we have down in cold water, you know, mm -hmm. that we have the Isaac singing with us. Now, we're mm -hmm. going to be releasing that to the Christian market for, I mean, wow. almost simultaneously. It's going right. to go out. Um, but um, so those I really love. I love the last track. Uh, sugar free, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, I'd be curious what your thoughts are on some of the stuff. But I, I, I wrote two down that I like yeah, that please. struck me in particular. One was rough yeah. around the edges. Really. Well, that was the first single. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. Yeah, and just to get home, both of those. I just let me just, let me tell you for a fact. <laughs> I didn't mention that to you just a minute ago. That. I, I kept telling Les. He kept saying, I wish I'd sung it a, a whole step higher, or, you know, wish we could go back. I said, Les, listen, let me tell you, your vocal on that is is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I said, I love, love that song. Yeah, I mean, and that's part of our story too, in a way, mm -hmm. you know. I love that song. And I wouldn't be upset if it was the next single at all. <laughs> Well, both of those I love. Of course, I love the whole album, but this, yeah. those two were the ones that I find myself kind of, you know, before yeah. after you came out, you know, yeah. and yeah. for some reason, I don't know what it is. I mean, it's psychological, I know, but it seems like when there's new attention focused on a song, I might have heard it a bunch of times. 
But then it's just uh -huh. like once the marketing push hits to another song on an album, I pay a little closer attention to it. That's and true. this time, that's where the whole Beatles thing kind of really hit me. And I was like, wow, sure. I didn't pick that up before, but it's there. But but um, I, again, yeah. you guys really knocked it out of the park. And for the oh, number of you. songs that are on the album, too, um, and I'll say album until they, yeah. you know, take my mouth shut from saying yeah. it. But yeah. um, I, I feel like for the number of songs that are on there, it makes the album an exceptional value, too, as far as the cost per song and, you know, the, yes. the math thing comes out in my head. But yeah, um, but I think you guys really, really, really knocked it out of the park. It should be Thank you. stoking um, uh, some demand for the next one out, which, of course, we need to talk when that one comes out, too. Sure. But, um, yeah. What else besides the new album? Do you guys yeah. have on your radar? What's up next? What's what's the rest of the year look like for you? Well, again, just get out there, get in front of people, uh, play some of these new things off the A Million Miles Later project. Uh, just doing what we do, which is, you know, play music uh, and have fun doing it. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, I mean, there's nothing better than standing on stage and and hearing and seeing the folks in the audience, not just having a great time, which they they, they seem to always do, mm -hmm. but they're singing along. And to have that kind of a legacy, that kind of a thing happening, why would we stop? Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, knock on wood that we're physically able to keep going. And we talk about that, you know, amongst ourselves. I mean, we don't say, OK, this is going to be the farewell tour this, you know, this date or whatever. I mean, because nobody knows. I mean, we don't yeah. know how much time we have, obviously. Yeah. Nobody right. does. So it's like, let's play it. Let's just go year by year, you know, mm -hmm. maybe month by month in some cases, you know, but we're all healthy enough, which is miraculous in itself, and uh, able to perform at the level that we demand of ourselves. And as long as we can keep doing it and we're happy and um, people will keep, you know, want to come see us, we're going to keep doing it. Well, and, you know, <laughs> I think fans don't realize what it takes out of a person to do what you guys Boy. do. I mean, the voice, the, you know, yeah. having to be away from family. Yeah. Uh, just wanting to rest. I mean, w we can be demanding fans. And uh, and I since I got into this business a little over 15 years ago of interviewing yeah. you and your peers, it's um, I've become more and more sensitive to that because you guys yeah there's fame there's there's in some cases a lot of money and a lot of attention but it's it doesn't come without a huge price and i for one appreciate what you and your bandmates have done to entertain us you know always well, the classics but man the new stuff you guys are doing it's worthy yeah. of the same kind of attention and i really appreciate what you and the guys have been doing all these years it's it's big it's very big. Well, I, I mean, I sincerely appreciate you saying that, you know, because it, there comes, there's a cost to doing all this, uh, a price to pay, you know, which, like you say, you're you're away from family, you're, and again, at, at our ages, um, it doesn't get easier. No. I mean, the demands, you know, and to stand on stage with guitars and perform, again, guitars at that. Yeah. <laughs> perform at the level that, like, like I said, that we demand of ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's taxing. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, and and it's taxing on on vocally too. I mean, thankfully, we're still able to sing pretty well. Um, you know, I was watching this documentary. I just finished it last night. This four part the limited little thing on Bon Jovi mm -hmm. and how he lost his voice. You know, had to have surgery and everything else. He's trying to come back. Well, you know. We haven't had to do that. You know, we're still able to yeah. to sing uh, at this level. And it's not easy. It really yeah. isn't. But again, the rewards, and I'm not just talking about monetary. I don't mean that. And it, it, the rewards of of entertaining people and, and this 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 kind of collective, you know, the band and the audience, this thing that happens when everybody's in sync, that's just a beautiful thing. And it, it's working. Um, I hope it continues to work for quite a few years longer. Well, I, I've only heard you guys once. It was, uh, 
before the shutdown, it was in Nashville when I was working downtown there. And Bev invited me to um, a thing you guys were doing before. I think it was like the basement tape thing. The, oh, the, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And you guys yeah. were doing that little outdoor deal at one of the, uh, I guess you'd call it a restaurant bar grill type thing. And, and mm -hmm. uh, I got to hear you guys there. And just, I mean, you guys, the pipes are still there. Yeah. I can say, having attended a lot of concerts by a lot of different people, yeah, um, that's not always the case. Sometimes no. you look and you think, gosh, they must need the money because they've sacrificed their voices or maybe their dexterity is not where it used to be on, on their instrument of choice. And, you know, that doesn't make me any less of a fan. Yeah. But. You know, I can truthfully say, I'm not saying this to blow smoke and sunshine in your direction, but you guys still got it. You're at that level that you referenced. And um, as yeah. a fan, I appreciate that more than you'll ever know. So appreciate you saying but, it too. But um, I do. Well, Sonny, this has been a blast. Sorry for the technical snafu there at the beginning. <laughs> no I, I keep an eye on your itinerary so I can uh, try to catch you when you get out my direction. I'm in East Tennessee, but uh, be great to see you guys up up close and personal again and shake your hands and uh, cheer you guys on while you're on stage. Appreciate it. And, you know, if we get in your area, contact us, come to the show. We'll get you there. All right, man. I appreciate that. I'll take you up on that. Stay safe. Wait. We'll talk again when that close to when that new album comes out. Absolutely. All right. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.